Hi everyone and welcome back to another AP Calculus video. In this video we're going to talk about a shortcut to integration by parts. It's part two of a two-part video series. So make sure that you watched part one or at least have an introduction to integration by parts before watching this video. So let's dive in and review an example from part one where we had to do uh, integration by parts two times to be able to solve this integral. So taking a look at this, in part one, here's how we approached it. We said that um, we're going to use this uh, formula, integration by parts, which integration by parts says that when I have the integral of u dv and I integrate it, my result will be uv minus the integral of v du. And we said that we choose u based on this, um, this acronym, LIPIT. And what LIPIT stands for, LIPIT, uh, LIPIT stands for logs, inverse trig functions, polynomial, exponential, and then trig functions. And the idea is it gives us an order in which to choose u. So if we have logarithms, that should be what u is. If there's no logarithms, then we go to inverse trig functions. If there's no inverse trig functions, then we choose polynomials, then exponentials, and then trig functions. So really, it's a hierarchy of the order in which we should choose what u is in our uh, integration by parts. So here I have a polynomial and I have an exponential. So we said we're gonna let u be that polynomial because that comes first in Lipit. That means that dv is the rest of the function, e to the x dx. So we then found du and we said, well, it's 2x dx. And then v we integrated, it's just e to the x, so that was really nice. And when we plugged it into our function, it looked like this, we had x squared, e to the x, so that's uv minus the integral of v du. And what we didn't like was that because we were left with this 2x here, we had to use integration by parts a second time. And so we used the same process. We said, well, here we're going to let u be that polynomial 2x, which means du is 2 dx. And then we said dv is the rest of it, e to the x dx, making v e to the x again, so that was nice. And we said, well, we have to keep on going, so we're going to keep this first part, x squared e to the x, minus, we had to put a big old bracket around it because it's subtraction, and um, then we put everything in again. We said, okay, well, it's u times v, 2x times e to the x, minus the integral of v, that's e to the x, du. And now we got it down to a, a part where we just had 2e to the x, and we can integrate that very easily, leaving us with a result that looks like this, x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x. When we distribute that subtraction, we get plus 2e to the x, and then plus c for our constant of integration. So the idea here is that uh, we had to do integration by parts twice. And that's totally fine. If you love integration by parts and you want to do that twice and take up that time with that, that's great. What I'm going to show you is there is a shortcut to this. And it's based on the idea that sometimes you have functions where it's going to force you to do uh, integration by parts multiple times. And oftentimes, the types of functions involved, um, one of them is a polynomial. And the other one is what we call a cyclical function. So like e to the x or sine or cosine. That's really when this works the best. And this tabular integration basically um, needs us to have whatever u would be in Lippet. That has to be able to, you have to be able to take the derivative over and over again and have it eventually go down to zero. And let me show you how it works. So basically, Tabular integration requires these two basic things. One function is a cyclical derivative, like sine, cosine, or e to the x, and the other derivative must reduce to zero at some point. And let me be more specific. Perhaps this isn't quite as specific enough. Um, when I say as you take each successive derivative, so first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, at some point you'll have a derivative that's zero. So here's what this work. Here's how this goes. You're going to take whatever you would let u be, and you're going to differentiate u. So I'm going to say u is x squared, meaning dv is e to the x dx. You're going to start by writing down the two functions. And I'm actually not going to label them as u and dv. What I might do, a better way to label this, might be to do this. I might say, well, this is u and this is dv. And I write them down. I say x squared e to the x. 
We call it tabular integration because it involves organizing your integrals and your derivatives in a table format. That's what tabular means. So now I'm going to take the derivative of u until I can take it no more. So I'm going to jot those down. So 2x, 2, and then 0. So I'm going to differentiate until I get to 0. Now, this one I'm going to do second, and I'm going to integrate it until I have just as many terms. So now I'm going to integrate to match. So I need to do it three times. So e to the x, e to the x, e to the x. Boom. Now, the cyclical function oftentimes will just kind of like cycle through. And really, uh, as I think more and more on this and as I apply tabular integration, it, I think it's possible as long as you have one function as a polynomial and the um, derivative will go to zero, I think you could use any function. It just seems to work more quickly with these cyclical functions. Uh, when you integrate them, you don't run into as many troubles. So now, here's how this works. I'm going to start out on the u side, and I always set it up like this, u dv. And I'm going to start here, I'm going to circle x squared, and I'm going to draw a line catty corner. So I'm going to kind of go to the second integral. And then I'm going to do the same thing here, and I'm going to connect these. And then what I'm going to do is I'm always going to start with a plus sign, I'm going to alternate. You always start with a plus. Plus, minus, plus, minus. Now, sometimes you'll have negative values for your dv, and that's okay. If you minus a negative, it will turn to a plus in your final answer. But the idea here is that we're finding a shortcut to all this big, messed up work we did here. And if we think about what's happening, this first term was positive, and then because of the subtraction in my integration by parts, the second term will be negative. And because we distribute the subtraction to the subtraction, it turns positive. So that's where this plus minus plus is coming from. What we're doing is we're saying, hey, when integration by parts is done in this way, it always plays out the same. There's a pattern to it. And all we're doing is we're taking that pattern and we're simplifying it and nailing it down and we're calling it tabular integration. That's essentially what this is. And it's a faster way to integrate by parts when you have to do that multiple times. So now I'm literally going to write this down. I'm going to multiply the connected terms together. So x squared times e to the x, and that positive sign tells me that's a positive term. The next term will be 2x times e to the x, but it's going to be negative, so I'm going to have subtraction. And then the next one will be positive, 2e to the x, and then plus c. And if I zoom out to what I got when I did integration by parts, look how much less work it is. Look how simple it is to do. Once you have the hang of it, it goes so much faster than trying to do integration by parts. So let's try it a few more times and see how it works. So here's my tabular integration problem. And again, whatever I'd let u be, I'm going to write that down. So I'm going to say u and then dv. So x cubed cosine 2x. Now I'm going to take the derivative of u until I can do it no more. So that would be 3x squared, 6x, 6, and 0. I'm going to go until I hit 0. dv, I'm going to integrate to match. So remember our wheel of signs. So as I'm integrating, right? Okay, so the integral of cosine is sine, but then I also have to remember I had this 2x. So I'm actually going to divide by 2. And if you go over to the side, you'll, you'll realize, hopefully at this point, you've gotten the hang of doing u substitution. And when you have to, when you have cosine of 2x, the antiderivative is sine of 2x over 2. Okay. And then I'm going to keep on going. So then the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. And it's over 2, but then it's over 2 again. So it's going to ultimately be over 4. And now I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to have negative sine 2x. And each time that denominator gets multiplied by another 2. And then I have to go one more time. Cosine 2x. And this time I'm over 16. So then my rule for tabular integration is I'm always going to start with u. 
which by the way, if this is dv, isn't this v? So it's u times v. That's the first part of integration by parts. Pretty beautiful, actually. So I'm going to connect these. And I always do this part. I always connect them. Because you got a lot going on. You don't want to lose track. And then plus, minus, plus, minus. Always start with the plus. It's always positive. And it's uv and then minus the integral of v du. So you always go plus and then minus. So now I'm just going to write it. I'm going to multiply them together and, mul and do it again. I'm going to multiply them together and write out my answer. You guys, with this one, yeah, I want you to understand you'd have to do integration by parts three times to be able to solve this one. So tabular integration is really great in situations like these. So here's my final answer. x cubed times the sine of 2x all over 2 minus, oh, but it's minus a minus, so I am going to change it to a plus. 3x squared times the cosine of 2x all over 4 plus a negative. So I am paying attention when I have minus a minus, it does turn to that plus. When you have plus a minus, it will turn into a minus in your answer. So minus 6x times the sine 2x over 8. You can reduce. I'm not going to. Minus 6 cosine 2x over 16 plus c. <laughs> Don't forget your plus c. So, I mean, look at all this. You'd have to do tabular integration a total of three times to be successful on a problem like this. Uh, or, sorry, integration by parts. Tabular integration, integration puts it all together, and it, it's basically carrying out that integration by parts those many, many times. It's just finding the commonalities, right? It's finding the pattern and saying, well, you're always going to do this. Here's how we can do it. We're just going to do it quickly here in this tabular table form. So let's try one more. Um, here we go. Here's a tricky one. Let's see if we can find out why it's so tricky. So remember, whenever I um, am trying to figure this one out, uh, I'm going to let u be what u would be in Lipit. So let's see. Here we let u. So Lipit says exponentials come before trig functions. So u is going to be e to the x. dv is going to be cosine of x. Okay. So i got to use my wheel of signs. Okay. So here we go. So, ooh. Now, if I try to use tabular here, let me show you what's going to happen. There's going to be nowhere to stop. Ooh. Cosine, ooh, it's never going to stop, right? It's going to be like, ooh, sine, and then negative cosine, and then negative sine, and it's going to go on forever. I could be here forever. So there's got to be a better way. So sometimes tabular integration is not going to solve all your problems. So let's go back old school, and let's try just integration by parts, which remember, tabular integration is integration by parts. It's just taking the fact that you'd have to do it over and over again, um, and it's taking that and... Uh, finding the commonalities, and finding the shortcut and organizing it in a table form. So maybe tabular isn't the best way to go here, and that's okay. So let's go back to plan A and try just integration by parts. So I'm still going to let u be the e to the x. That's okay. I'm still going to do that approach. So u is e to the x, which means I'm still going to find du. That's going to be e to the x dx. That's okay. v is cosine of x, or sorry, dv is cosine of x dx, which means v is going to be sine of x. Okay. So I'm still going to approach this. So the integral of e to the x cosine x dx is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay, so I know I'm going to run into a problem. I know that I'm going to hit a problem here because this is just going to keep going forever. But I'm going to do this one more time in the hopes that it comes back around. So, integration by parts a second time. I'm going to let u be that exponential function. I'm going to let dv be the sine of x. So that means du is e to the x dx, and v is negative cosine. Now, I'm feeling good about this because I like it when I come back around. 
to having cosines. And you'll see why here in just a minute. So let's write the whole thing out. The integral of e to the x cosine of x dx is equal to e to the x sine x minus, okay, here we go, integration by parts, e to the x times negative, oh, and there's no dx there, negative cosine of x minus the integral of negative cosine x du. All right. Let's clean it up a little bit. Okay, so when I distributed all my subtraction, cleaned up my negative signs, pulled some of them out of my integrals, here's what I'm left with once I simplify everything out. And I'm, I realize that this is just going to keep on going. But one thing I do notice after having done this two times through is this. I notice that I have an integral of e to the x cosine x here on the right-hand side as well as the left-hand side. And me writing what it was equal to was no coincidence here. I knew this was going to happen. I knew we were headed in this direction. If you're not writing down the entire integral, including the, u, the integral of u dv, you're going to be forced to make sure that you're constantly looking back at the original problem. And when you have a situation like this where you have two cyclical functions, it's possible that you're going to have to be really creative with how you solve for the integral. So what I'm going to do, and here's the creative part, right? I'm going to add this integral of e to the x cosine of x dx to both sides. It's like getting a y on the right-hand side and just adding it back over to y. And here's where this leaves me. I'm going to have two of these integrals. I can treat it like a variable. Oh, interesting. So now check it out. If I take this integral and I divide out that constant, then I've solved for it and I've found the solution. So essentially, I'm going to divide by 2 and divide by 2, and I'm going to say plus c. And boom, I have now solved for that integral. So the tricky part here was that I had to do integration by parts twice. Then I had to recognize that within my problem, I had the original question. I had the original integral. So all I had to do was write an equation with an equal sign so that I could add the integral over to the other side. Oh, excuse me. So that's the creativity in calculus. And that's something you have to be always constantly on the lookout for. Now, is this something that's going to be on every single problem? Absolutely not. This is a tricky problem, and this is the kind of thing on the AP exam that's going to separate the 4s from the 3s and the 5s from the 4s. So can you get a 3 and not understand what's happening here? Very likely, yes. Can you get a 4 or a 5 without at least having an understanding of this? Hmm. This is the kind of stuff you need to know to get your 4 or your 5. So let's do one more here. We're going to prove this. Actually, this is not one more. We're going to do a couple more. But we're going to prove that the natural log of x, its integral, its antiderivative is x ln x minus x plus c. So throughout the process here, what we've done is I've given you this antiderivative on a formula sheet. If you're uh, in my student in my class, it's on our formula sheet that we use. Uh, but here, let me show you where it comes from. So Lippitt says this. Lippitt says... If I'm going to choose logarithms, um, or if I'm going to choose what u is, I'm going to choose u based on Lippitt. So logarithms comes first. So I'm going to let u be natural log of x, which means dv is just dx, right? Which, is, means, which means v is just x, and du is 1 over x dx. All right, so now let's plug it in. Here we go. This is not too bad. So I'm going to do u times v, that's x ln x, minus the integral of v du. Oh, always simplify before you try to do an integral. This right here, this simplifies to x over x. So let's make it easy on ourselves. x ln x minus 1. Well, what's the integral of 1? 
just x, it's the antiderivative. So x ln x minus x, and then we tack on our constant of integration. Boom, we've just proven that this is a true identity. So sometimes dv will just be dx, and that's OK. okay? When all else fails, try integration by parts. Here's another great one that we can use integration by parts on to prove what's happening here. And this one, this is a fun one to do. So let's do it the same way that we did our natural log. So remember Lipit. Now we're going to use inverse trig functions. So this will be u, dx will be dv. So here we go. If u is sine inverse, then du, who, who remembers the derivative of inverse sine? It should be 1 over one min the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Ooh. So that means dv is dx and v is x. So this is a formula that you should know that if, you, if this is a surprise to you, you should probably go look it up. It's one that you need to have memorized. Sine inverse and tangent inverse are the two most common ones on your AP exam. So you want to make sure you know those, tuck those away, study them up. So here we go. Integration by parts, u times v, so x sine inverse of x minus the integral of v du. That's going to be x over, oof, that's ugly, isn't it? Oh, goodness gracious. Well, how do I do this integral? Oh, my goodness. I might have to use two integration techniques in one problem. Integration by parts and dun, 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 u sub u sub to the rescue. So here we go. I'm going to let u be the stuff in the denominator. I'm going to let it be 1 minus x squared, which means du is negative 2x dx. So there's my x dx. This will be my u. The negative 2 I can deal with later. I'm not too worried about that. x dx. All right, so let's go ahead and integrate this. So I'm going to go off to the side. And this is where it's OK to kind of have some workspace. So the integral, uh, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it as 1 over the square root of u, du. And then I have a negative 1 half out here. I'm going to pull that constant out. So this is u to the negative 1 half. So when I do that antiderivative, u to the negative 1 half, uh, increase it by 1, it becomes u to the positive 1 half. But then we're going to divide by 1 half. Okay, look, the halves cancel away. I'm going to have negative u to the 1 half power plus c, of course. Uh, and when I go back over here and kind of write it in, here's what it's going to look like. So negative square root of 1 minus x squared. That's that u to the neg or negative u to the 1 half. So now I'm going to come back over to my problem here. I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to bring down this x sine inverse minus negative square root of 1 minus x squared plus c. And when I clean everything up, x sine inverse x plus the square root of 1 minus x squared plus c. There you go. So again, it's OK. Nope. It is perfectly OK to have uh, multiple integration techniques coming through in a problem. All right, we are ready for one final example. And this is uh, probably one of the most tricky examples uh, that we could go with. And uh, let's see if you can kind of figure it out along the way. So with this, uh, I have cosine of the square root of x dx. And it may not look like, um, it may not look like a integration by parts problem yet, but it will be. So we're going to start with u sub. Remember, that's always what we start with. Uh, so I, I have cosine of some stuff. So with u sub, I'm going to let u be that square root of x, or x to the 1 half power, which means du is going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half power dx. Now, it may not look like we can do anything with this yet, but let's just kind of like, I don't know, let's keep going with this and see what happens. So if du is this 1 half, I'm going to rewrite it like this, 1 over 2 square root of x 
dx. Now, what I notice here is that as I keep on going with this, if the idea here is to try to do a u substitution, sometimes it's helpful when I start working through here to make sure that I'm paying attention to what I'm getting and where I started from, because I still have this square root of x. And I notice that I've got this square root of x here in my du, but that's also the equivalent of what u, that's what I started with, that's what u is. u is the square root of x. So right now it's kind of like jumping out at me a little bit like, hey, this is something interesting. Because remember, the whole goal here is to get rid of anything x, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as du <clears throat> equals 1 over 2u dx. Now, why did I do that? Well, when I start replacing things, so I'm going to come down here. When I start rewriting this as cosine of u dx, my goal is to try to replace the dx. That's what I need to get rid of. So I would need to solve for dx over here in my work with my u substitution. So what I would want to do is I would want to find a way, and if I can get rid of the x here, then that allows me to multiply it over to the other side and get 2u du is equivalent to dx. And so now I've created an expression with the letter u, with that variable u in it, that I can replace the dx with. So now I'm able to have an integral cosine of u times 2u du. I've replaced dx with an equivalent form that involves only the variable u. And I've done this by being creative with my substitution and recognizing that, hey, u is the square root of x. So really, this is 1 over 2u instead of 1 over 2 times the square root of x. And then I'm, that allows me to move it over. So this sort of thing happens from time to time. And now that we've done a, uh, our u substitution, what we're going to do is we're going to take this new red integral and we're going to use integration by parts. So we're going to use multiple integration techniques to solve this integral. So we're going to do integration by parts. So I'm going to let u, for integration by parts u, be that polynomial to u. And actually, I could use a tabular integration here, and I think I might. So u, and then dv, u is 2u, so then I'm going to have 2, and I'm going to have 0. dv is cosine u, so sine u, negative cosine u. I could have just used the integration by parts formula, and it would have been just fine, but this is actually a little bit quicker. So I'm going to have 2u sine u minus, oh, minus a negative turns to a plus, 2 cosine u. And then my last thing to do is just put the square root of x back in for u. So it's 2 square root of x times the sine of square root of x plus 2 cosine square root of x uh, plus c. There's my final answer. So you can see that sometimes we have to get a little creative with our integration techniques. And one of my favorite things when I was first learning uh, how to do calculus when I was in high school was the, the challenge of trying something and, you know, having it not work out or through the process of trying things, I would have a whole page of work and I would learn some things from it, but it would ultimately not be the right strategy. So I'd have to throw it away and try something different. And through my, in a sense, failures uh, at trying all these different methods, um, I learned a lot of things and I learned shortcuts and I, I learned that, oh, I didn't need to do all this work. So sometimes our failures teach us the greatest lessons of all. And so throughout this unit and, and as calculus gets harder and as you move forward, just remember that you can learn a lot from failures. And um, I hope that that's, you know, <laughs> an inspiration to you. Uh, and some of you may be feeling like you'll learn a lot more than others, but um, whatever the case may be, you learn a lot from messing up. And the more paper you throw away, the more you're learning, right? So keep at it. You can do this. Um, you've got this.